Hey guys, uh, before we get started on our first lesson of the week, I just wanted to welcome you guys back uh, to my class. I wanted to hopefully give you a little bit of comfort in saying that I know for some of us, the first week we had tech issues. Maybe we were struggling a little bit getting back into the math groove and that's okay. Uh, I know I had some struggles too, as far as technology, making sure I had everything right. Uh, getting back to you guys, I wanted to always do that quickly. Uh, but let's try and make it to where every week, every day, we get a little bit better. Uh, if you're ever confused, we're asking questions, we're learning. And I think it's just going to get better with time, guys. I'm excited. And uh, keep asking questions, keep emailing me, sending me your minds, joining Google Me, um, because I want to be able to see you guys and talk to you guys if you have any problems. So let's start this second week off great. I'm really excited. All right, so before we get down to business, just wanted to remind you guys of a couple things. We have a Delta Math from last week that is due tonight. So make sure if you've not already gotten that done, you do so before 11.59 tonight. Also, once we get done with this lesson, we're going to have a quizzes, not a quiz, but a quizzes activity that we're gonna start class off with tomorrow. So it is very important that you look for updates on how to join and just make sure that you've accepted my quizzes invite that I sent out last week. So quizzes activity tomorrow. Now, time to jump into a topic. And I'd like to introduce you guys to one of my favorite sequels. You're probably thinking, what the heck is this guy talking about? He's He's already speaking nonsense and the week just started. Well, I'm talking about expressions part two. Part du, if you're uh, speaking French. Last week, we had a chance to start getting into some math and we learned about expressions. And just a quick reminder, an expression is a math statement. And I'm going to let you guys finish this. It's a math statement that doesn't have what? without an equal sign. And so we see we kind of have a standard. This is one of our same standards from Friday. So let's, let's go over some vocab because in algebra especially, vocabulary is so, so important. And I think this is a great table that sums up pretty much any way we could phrase some of the math we're going to be seeing in this chapter. Uh, the one thing I would add is that sometimes less than will be written as fewer than. So just keep that in mind. But you can pause the video, guys, and take some time to look over this vocab chart. Just as a reminder, I want to remind you that a lot of students will make the mistakes, if they are going to make them, on these two right here. These are the most missed so fewer than, less than, and more than. And remember, the reason is because a lot of times, pretty much every time you use these words, the expression is being presented in reverse. So remember, these two right here, reverse order. And speaking of some callbacks and review, we're going to hit the ground running today, guys. But the good news is the trade-off is that Today, because this is a sequel day, is going to be a little bit quicker. It's going to be a little bit shorter because today is all about getting you guys practice, getting you ready uh, for our quizzes activities, getting us ready for our Delta math that's due tonight, just making sure we're feeling good about expressions. So I'm going to give you guys uh, the next couple minutes. I want you to see we're going to do both these sections here, but let's do them in pieces. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time. Try numbers one through six for me. You can pause the video now. Okay, take a look, guys. Anybody go six for six? If you did, that's awesome that you remembered and, and learned that from last week. The the three that I kind of wanted to focus on, really more, more like two, are number three and number four. We've got a fewer than and a less than situation. So be very, very careful. Remember, 
fewer than and less than or more than means we're talking reverse order. So if we're 11 fewer than a number, that means we take that number and subtract 11 by it. Same thing with number 4. If we're 17 less than h, we take h and we subtract 17. The good news about multiplication and division is that those are pretty much always written the way they are uh, given to us. The product of 5 and g, 5 times g. The quotient of 20 and t, 20 divided by t. <laughs> and you can see that number 1 and number 6, we actually got a little bit of a break. 5 plus a number d, that we can write that straight up. And the sum of 12 and x, we can write that straight up. So again, I'm going to give you the next six problems. This time we're doing this in reverse. It may take a little bit longer. We're going to write the word phrase for each of these statements. So go ahead and pause the video. And when you unpause, we'll check these together. How are we feeling, guys? We've got these six here. I tried to color coordinate them a little bit, you know, keep things interesting. We've got an addition and subtraction to start us off. And you're going to notice I wrote the, these both ways. You could have seen it. So either one of these for, for 7 and 8 would be correct. Number 9 and 10, we've got multiplication and division. We can write these just the way we see them. And then 11 and 12, we're back to addition. I decided to go with the sum instead of m more than h. And multiplication, the product of 5 and n. So I hope you guys went 6 for 6 there, but if not, that's okay. Take some time, look over this. You can pause the video. That's the great thing about video. You can always go back and practice different things. But get ready, because this is where the lesson, we don't have much left, but this is where these next couple sections are going to be where the, the lesson gets kind of tough. And we're actually going to see our most interesting and, and maybe challenging problem of the chapter so far. But before we get to that, let's look at 13 through 16 together. I know some of you guys are going to want to try these by yourself, and you are more than welcome to pause and do that. But for those of you who maybe are a little bit intimidated by these, I thought we could work together. We're talking algebraic expression. That means we're back to actually using math symbols, so we don't have to worry about writing it all out. It's more like that first section we did. Now, what do we got to be on the lookout for? Some of you guys know we got that word less than. So I already know I'm subtracting 12 from something. Well, what are we subtracting 12 from? The quotient of 12 and a number z. Okay, so quotient. That means we're talking division. So we're going to take 12 and divide it by z. So there's number 1. How about number 14? This one's kind of interesting. The quotient of 5 plus h. And n plus 3. So we're not dividing one term by one term. We're dividing two terms by two terms. Oh, but that, the good news is that's just one operation. We take this and divide it by that. These next couple are going to see us doing a couple operations, though, potentially. I think number 16 might just be one, but number 15 is definitely two. So we're talking five greater than, so I know I'm adding 5 to something, well, what are we greater than? What, what, what did we start off with? Well, the product of 3 and a number q. So 3 product means multiply times q plus 5. And then finally, the difference, we know difference means subtraction of 17, so 17 minus 22 over t. How are we feeling, guys? I'd say some of you worked ahead and were able to go 4 for 4 on that, which is awesome. Now, here was that problem I was telling you about. Maybe, maybe the toughest one we've done so far, but I know a lot of you guys are going to like the challenge. So whenever I say I'm about to pause the video, it's not for you to see if you can get the answer here, because probably most of us you may be a little confused as to where to start or what our answer should really look like. But as you're reading over this problem, again, we're not focused on solving it just yet. I want you to think about, we're actually going to be able to write an equation here. So we're going to be coming up with something that actually has an equal sign. And we're going to be modeling the relationship that this model 
as with the original. So be underlining, be thinking, maybe taking some notes as to how we're going to attack a word problem. So you can pause now. So the three things that jump out to me, guys, are that we're told every inch on her model is equivalent to 3.5 feet. So we're given that every inch on the model, but the problem is we have inches on the model and feet on the real boat. So we're going to have to do something about that. We're also told that the length of the model is called M. Let me see if I can zoom in real quick. And the length of the boat is B. So let's kind of let's kind of lay some things out here. <coughs> we know that every inch on the model is 3.5 feet on the real boat. But if we're going to have a relationship here, we need to have the same units. Otherwise, you can't really contextualize and understand just how much bigger the actual boat is. So let's do a little breakdown here. We're talking inches and feet. So what do we know about that? Well, we know that for every one foot, that's the same thing as 12 inches. So if every inch on her model is equivalent to 3.5 feet on the real boat, let's do a little bit of math here. Let's take that three feet, and how many inches is three feet going to make? Well, if every foot is 12 inches, what's three times 12 going to be? Three times 12 will be 36 inches. Now, we're told it's not three feet, it's 3.5 feet. So now we have to add on that extra half a foot. Well, how much is 0.5 of a foot? Oh, that is six inches. So if we add all that up, we find out that for every inch on her model, that's really going to be 36 inches plus six inches, 42 inches on the real boat. So let's, let's make that comparison here. Every one inch of M is equal to, M being our model, 42 inches of B, B being the length of the boat. So how can we come up with an equation here? Well, we can say that the length of the boat, B, is really just going to be 42 of M, because if every inch of the model is really 42 inches on the boat, then the boat is going to be equal to 42 times every inch on the model. So B equals 42 times M. That would be our or not our expression, our equation there. That would model how the boat compares to the model. Whew, that was a tricky one. If you have any questions, guys, you are more than welcome, though, to get in touch with me about this one. If, if it kind of confused you a little bit, that's okay. So as we flip over, guys, we are to the last problem of the day. Not counting your homework, of course, but the last problem we're doing together. So just like that boat problem, I'm going to let you guys pause and read over and maybe make some notes as far as what we're seeing here. So let's just look at the basics here. We know Lynn is putting in money for his fund. We're told that Lynn is putting in L dollars. Now the tricky part here is even though he's putting a certain amount of money in that we don't know, we don't know how many times he's depositing to get up to that amount. Because we're also told every time Lynn is putting in money, adding up to this amount, every time he goes and deposits money, his parents are putting in two bucks every time. So let's, let's put some things on some unknowns here. We know that L is going to be Lynn's total cash. So how much money Lynn puts in at the end of, at the end of this stretch? But there's another variable we don't know. We don't know how many times Lynn is going to the bank to put in that money. And if we have an unknown, uh, an unknown number, you know exactly what we can represent that with. 
I'm going to call this variable D. And that Z is going to represent the number of deposits Lim made to get to his total cash. So let's put this all together. We know Lin is putting in, we're going we're gonna to write an expression to represent how much in total is going into Lin's fund. Well, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, and let me, let me rephrase this, Lin's total cash he puts in. It's not, L is not what his parents put in, it's what Lin is putting in. So this isn't going to be the total amount with his parents' money included, L is just the amount of money Lynn is putting in. So L, Lynn's amount. Now, what's going to happen with Lynn's amount? Well, we know every time he puts money in, his parents are also putting money in. So take a second. What operation do you think we're going to use there? If his parents are adding in money, we're going to be adding and then what happens every time he deposits, no matter what number of deposits he makes? Well, every time he does it, parents are putting in $2 times the number of deposits. So his total money is going to be the amount he puts in plus $2 times every time he puts money in. And guys, if you can believe it, this was a pretty short lesson today. So what you're going to have tonight is you are going to have a quizzes activity that we will I will post tomorrow first thing in class you'll log into quizzes and answer the quizzes over these seven multiple choice questions but before you get to that make sure tonight you knock out that Delta math assignment that's due at midnight and guys if you have any questions you can let me know email me reminds Use Google Meet, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. What a great start to the week.